This is Alice, Bob, and their new substitute teacher, Eve. Alice is trying to secretly send Bob the answers to their maths test, and Eve is trying to prove it. Usually, Alice and Bob communicate using encrypted messaging apps, making it difficult for their regular teacher to prove anything. Unfortunately for Alice and Bob, Eve builds quantum computers in her spare time, allowing her to break the pair's usual encryption and read their messages. Luckily, there is a solution, a quantum cryptography protocol called BB84. Today's computers communicate in a language with only two letters, or bits, commonly represented as a zero and a one. We encode messages by grouping these digits into what is known as a bit string. For example, the bit string 101 translates to the number 5. To perfectly encrypt this message, Alice can use a one-time pad. This is a secret random string of bits of the same length as the original message, which is represented here as all ones for simplicity. This one-time pad is added to the original message following the rules of bitwise addition and results in a new message which only Alice or anyone she gives her secret pad to can decipher. She can use BB84 to share this secret string with Bob, which he could then use to decrypt her public messages without Eve ever knowing what was actually said. First, Alice generates a secret random string of bits and converts them into a stream of photons. Photons are the tiny wave particle packets that light is made of. The direction of the oscillating motion of a photon wave is called its polarization. Alice has to choose a measurement direction when she creates the photons, called the basis. BB84 uses two bases, diagonal and rectilinear. Depending on the direction in which each photon is polarized, it represents a zero or a one. When Bob receives the stream of photons, he, like Alice, needs to choose a basis to measure each one. If he chooses the same basis as Alice, he'll get the same bit as her original string. If he chooses the wrong basis, he has a 50-50 random chance of getting a 1 or a 0, so half his measurements will give the wrong answer. Some of the photons will get lost along the way, so Bob leaves blank spots where he knows there should have been a photon. All the steps up to now have happened secretly, but the next step is public. Bob announces to the whole world which basis he used to measure each photon. Alice then publicly confirms which ones he got right. Eve now knows which bits Bob measured correctly, but she still doesn't know what values he got as he never told anyone. The important thing is Bob now knows the values of the bits he measured in the correct basis, without Alice ever having to tell him. Take a look at this example. If you're not fully sure about the method, I recommend you pause the video here and try to get a grasp of each step. We can see that the bits Bob keeps correspond to when the sending and receiving bits are the same and also have the same basis. The final outcome leaves them with four shared secret bits. But what if Eve is able to measure the photons before they get to Bob? Doing this will destroy the photon's quantum state, so Eve needs to generate new photons to replace the ones she destroyed. Here's a closer look at what is happening here. Eve only has a 50% chance of guessing the measurement basis correctly. When Bob measures the photons that are now polarized in the wrong basis, there's a 50% chance he'll get the wrong value for that bit. This means that 25% of the bits Bob receives will be wrong, even if he measures in the correct basis decided by Alice. To prevent this sort of eavesdropping, Bob publicly announces some of the bit values he measured, and Alice publicly confirms if they're correct. If there is no 25% error, they can be sure no eavesdropping has taken place, and the remaining bits can be used as a one-time pad that can encrypt perfectly secure messages that not even Eve can read.